and welcome back to Building with the Boys. We finally have the next four parts of the Titanic. So we've got 29 through to 32. Uh, each of those will be coming up very shortly. Um, it has been, a, again, a bit of a drag because this should have been here last week. But over in the UK, uh, Royal Mail have gone on strike again. And apparently they've gone on strike another 18 times between now and Christmas. So that'll be fun and something to look forward to, I'm sure. Um, I, I'm not going to get into it, but what I will say is, uh, if your union rep has announced 18 strikes, your union rep sucks because he's that, he has that little confidence in his negotiating ability that he's preempting the fact that he needs to strike for two months. I get it. It's a threat and whatever, but when you're upsetting the entire nation, it's, it's hard to get support for your cause. You know, we're all struggling at the moment and it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So Royal Mail are, are striking and striking heavily. So I'm expecting at least, at least the next two of these to be delayed as well. It's the way it is. Anyway, that's them. This is us. Back to the build. So what have we got coming up? Uh, it's all engine. All of this is all engine. Now there is not much. I can show you right here. So this is the entirety of this month's delivery. So that's it. We got these little four boxes here. It is bits. It's detailing and bits. That's it. So we have no hefty lumps of hull or anything like that. Um, it is, it's little bits and little enhancements to the engine. Now that said, having seen and looked in the magazines of, of how these look at the end, it looks lovely. I mean, this is the thing. It, this is a level of detail that we want as modelers. So uh, unfortunately, there might not be these big hulking parts to work with. But these will really enhance those engines, and they, they do make them look quite good. We are doing pure engine from now until Christmas. That's it. There is there is no parts of hull. There is no superstructure. Nothing. So until at least issue forty, um, we're building we're building engine. That's it. Uh, which is fine because I mean again, this is kind of what I was expecting. I thought we were going to build an engine room, and then once that's built independently, it's going to slot into the. Um, it's going to slot into the ship. Now, something interesting. Uh, we saw what's coming up, and I believe it's issue 38, um, is a USB cable, which would suggest that this thing isn't going to run on batteries. Um, it would suggest that we can either charge it and run it, um, or it's going to be mains powered. That's interesting, because, I mean, I just, I just always assumed this was going to be battery operated, but when they're, they're talking about USBs, it would suggest not. Um, so definitely the engines in the, um, in the engine room are going to be, are going to be around for USB cable. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Um, there has been concern about the, um, uh, about fitting your engine to the, the floor and it being snug, um, against the, um, the pump that it's not, you're not getting that turn. Relax is what I'd say at this point. Relax. You're not supposed to be fitting it yet. So if you're, you're jamming it in and fitting it. Okay, maybe maybe you're doing it wrong. Maybe there's something else coming. Maybe there's a fix coming. Maybe we don't know. So what I'd say is, don't start chopping up your model. And well, I'll just drill a hole in here. Just wait and see. You know, I, patience is, is a hell of a thing. But let's wait and see before we assume something doesn't work. We don't know how this is all going to go together. We're just guessing at this point. So let's wait and see. Don't go chopping things up. All right, just cool your jets. We'll be all right. Um, so in this one, in, in 29, what are we going to be doing? So we're going to be putting the engine together. So at the end of last month, we made the first two parts of the um, uh, of the engine. In this one, we are doing the crankshaft, and we're basically putting it together. So you can see there, this is what we get in this issue. And we're going to be putting it together. We've done this before, uh, just on the other one. So there's nothing new. There's There's no sort of nasty surprises coming our way. We know how to do this. It's pretty much a, a repeat of what we did in stage nine, I believe, that long ago. Um, but without further ado, let's get into it. At the end of this one, we will have our Titanic talk. And as you can see from the Halloween decorations that have started to appear in the room, we're going to go spooky this month with uh, Titanic. There are very strange ghost stories and supernatural tales of the Titanic, which I, I'm not a believer. Um, but these are stories that circulate. So we're going to talk about those. When we do the movies uh, in the next episode, we've watched the Titanic horror movie, which was ludicrous, but we'll talk about that one as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get issue 29 built. Okie doke. So here is everything we get inside. Stage 29. Let's get all these parts out. So we've got a couple of bucks. Okay, so we recognise... You're going to recognise all of this. Uh, that's that there. We know what this is. This is going to be... 
our paint shelf. There we go, this is our paint shelf there. Uh, we then have what we'll on the tops of the uh, the engine. We've got some braces there and some screws. So that's what we got. We're going to need these parts from last month. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're also going to need these that we've built as well last month. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so these are the parts we're going to be using first. Uh, these are these ones. Uh, and then taking our crankshaft with the pin the thinner pin there, facing that way, we're going to start with this one here. So, with the mouse facing up, I'm going to pop that one on. There we go, that one's clicked in. I'll take our second one and we are going to go into this one here. So, we're going to go in there. That one's in. Take our third one. I'm going to skip that one, skip that one, and we're going to go into there. So let's go on there. And then take our fourth one. And they go right on the end. That one's going to go into there. So that is how we'll be looking at this point. Let's go on to the next stage. Okay, let's take this section of our engine. We all remember the fun and games we had with this one last time, lining these up. Um, but this is what we're going to do. So these are going to fit into the grooves here. Now, I believe there is an easier way of doing this, but I'll be damned if I can remember what it was. And I didn't really have that many problems with it the last time. So I'm just, I'm just going to do it the way they, um, they advised to do it in the instructions. Uh, let's swing that one over. That one's going to go in there. And that's going to rest on there. Um, and that's it. So just move these about so that they're, they're sitting in the right channel um, where they need to be. And then we're going to add this part to this part and close that down. So let me get that done. Okay, so that's attached now. So we've got our, our attached. Next thing we're going to do is, is we're going to take the, uh, the cylinder heads. We're going to attach them to each of the corresponding holes. So we are going to go with this one first. The, you have to give my fingernails. I've been painting Warcraft miniatures with the kid, and I've got <laughs> what I believe is called Abattoir Black under my nails. Uh, right, so we're gonna get these put on. Make sure these are going the right way around. Yes, 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 yes. Right, so there is a small hole and a large. No, there's not. These both are exactly the same size. very fiddly this part. There we go. So that's that one in. And then we're going to move on to the second one. On there. Now the tiny one goes on this one. And there is no yeah, there's no pin on this one. that one there and then finally <laughs> yeah I'm gonna need to get the goggles out for this I think I don't know, maybe not. Yep, this one for goggles. Okay, so that's sorted. Uh, it wasn't the, um, any of the glasses. It's, I had this one there and that one there. This one's slightly smaller. So you need slightly bigger ones going there. But those are on. We now have a couple of final pieces down to the top. Um, which are the distribution valves. Which are these two here? These two little black ones here. Um, now I believe these are both exactly the same. It's these here. Um, but let's get those put on as well. Put 
There's one. I'll put one more because of the other end. This is fiddly. There we go. And that's that one in as well. So there we go. That's now the top of our uh, our engine. Looking lovely. Um, I'm going to move on to this part. So we're going to take this one over. Flip this way around. So we're going to make sure this pin here is facing that end. Um, and we are going to add the remaining parts that we have over here. So this is the way these are going to go. So we want clipping on there like so. That's one. Two, three, and finally four. So we have that part complete. Now we're going to attach this to here. So we're going to pop this one onto <laughs> onto there. Right, so this is easier said than done. I don't remember this being this difficult this time. I, I remember assembling this differently. There's one. And then two is going to go onto there. So two. And three is going to go onto there. There's three, and then finally four is going to go on to there. So that's those four in. I know what we're going to do is we're going to lift this front piece up. I remember this. And we're going to attach it to here. So that's going to go in there. Now we know. We can see. We're getting a bit reminiscent. Now it's coming back to me. So that's how we're looking at this point. Let's move on to the next stage. So preparing our uh, our valve heads here, our um, sorry braces here. We've got we recommend we recognise this one, which has been a bone of contention. A lot of people question on which way around it does or doesn't go. I'm going to follow the instructions. Is all I can do. If it's incorrect, fine. We'll take it apart later on and fix it. But I'm going to follow their instructions, and they say to put it on the way we're about to put it on. Um, right. Let's just stand this up on its end. And we are going to put on this piece first. So first we're going to put on this bracket here. Try that again. So there's one. And then we're going to put the opposing one on the other end. So this one's going to go on here. It's weird, I just don't remember doing this. Um, I remember building the engine, but because we're building it in a different sort of sequence, it has thrown me somewhere out of kilter. It's very unusual. Um, right, it's that one there. Here we go. Okay, so those are in. Uh, now I'm going to screw these um, uh, these covers in place. So I'm going to start with this one. And again, I know with this one <laughs> there was a controversy of which way around it goes. I'm just I'm just going to follow the instructions. I'm just going to do it as the instructions say. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Um, but I know I followed the instructions. So if anything does go weird with it, well, I can blame the instructions and not me because <laughs> I uh, I followed what they said to do. So let's get this first one in. So there's one, and because I'm going to that line, I'm going to use just a touch of three and one on the tip of this screw because that one was a bit stiff. That's easier.
to two. All right, and then we're gonna do this one. And then that will be this one pretty much complete. We just have the um the valve to add, but then I'm gonna lap mine and I'll explain why when we get to it. Right, so it only goes one way around. So that's where that one's going. And again, we screw this in. There's one. And finally two. So there is our bloody hell, that's not staying in. Just push that right in. Okay, so that is our port side engine kind of complete. The only thing left to do now is this valve. Now, we're supposed to glue it, but because of the shenanigans we've had with the other one, I'm tempted not to. This is actually turning. Yeah. Oh, see, this happens. You get these weird kind of kinks in this. There we go. There we go. Right. So we're off. Um, I'm not going to glue it. I'm not going to glue it. You're supposed to, but there's nothing so I can't glue that at a later stage. So for the immediate, just in case we do have a problem with fit and squeeze later on. I'm thinking I'm not going to glue it. Don't know. Nope, not going to glue it. Um, so that will conclude this issue. So there we are. So now we have our pistons working on our, uh, our new engine. That's it. That's all for this one. So that's 29 in the bag. Um, now we've got the engine. We've, we've pretty much got the engine. Uh, in the next one coming up, we will be building the um, catwalk which again we've done, so just give this a base and that gives this engine something sturdy and we pretty much complete with that engine, then it's just detail that needs to go on to it. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're one of the thousands that are watching us but haven't subscribed yet, your subscription would be very much appreciated. Helps us massively. Uh, we'll be your friend forever. I'll even dance at your wedding. Um, if you are just sticking around for the build instructions, thank you very much. If you're sticking around for our Titanic Tales, well, let's get spooky because it's Halloween. So, there are a lot of nonsense stories about the Titanic revolving ghosts and curses and all kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> we will briefly touch on that, but the one that I'm going to talk about which is one that comes up quite a lot, which is a strange coincidence. Uh, and it involves a book uh, called Futility. Originally it was called Futility, now it's, it's commonly known as Wreck of the Titan. But, before Titanic, it was called Futility. So this is something that, that you've got to take into account as well. Now it's known as Wreck of the Titan. Like, wow, what a coincidence. Like, no, it was called Futility. Um, but that doesn't stop it from being a very strange coincidence. Now, this book was published in 1898, so 14 years before Titanic started and never finished its maiden voyage. Um, and there are remarkable similarities. So it's about a, a ship called the Titan, and the Titan is referred to as unsinkable. Um, and it hits an ice shelf and it sinks, which is a remarkable coincidence. It's been 14 years. This is some serious foreshadowing. Now, what's bizarre is it has pretty much the, the, the description of it in the book is pretty much identical to the Titanic. It has the same dimensions. Um, it's traveling at the same speed, 22 and a half knots, when it hits the ice shelf. These were remarkable coincidences. Um, and ultimately, the ship sinks because there weren't enough lifeboats. Which is... It's a remarkable coincidence, isn't it? Um, but it gets weirder. It gets weirder. Um, because when Titanic set sail in, in 1912, uh, there was also a short story been published about three weeks prior to Titanic setting sail. And it was called The White Ghost of Disaster. Now, 
what's weird about this is there's a chance that one of the magazines this was published in could have been on board because it was on newsstands when Titanic sank. Now, again, what's strange about this is it features a ship called the Admiral. And the Admiral was an 800-foot liner, um, which, again, hits an iceberg, sinks. Uh, a lot of passengers die because there wasn't enough lifeboats on board. And it was travelling at 22 and a half knots when it made the collision. Now, what happened there? Right, so... Did the writer of The White Ghost of Disaster plagiarise the wreck of the Titan futility? And that's why the similarities are there. So you've got one writer plagiarising another writer, and that's why this has happened. Um, or is something else going on? There's an abnormal amount of stories and books written around about this time um, of ships and smaller vessels, boats, hitting icebergs and sinking. Um, in the Atlantic. So why? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm a non-believer. I'm a complete skeptic. So my thing is, if I hear hoofs, I think horses, because ninety-nine times out of a hundred of hear hoofs, it's going to be horses. One in a hundred, it might be zebra. Right? What it will never be is unicorn. Right? So if you hear hoofs, think horses. It might. Very small chance it might be zebra, but it will never, ever, ever be unicorn. However, there are some people here who, who, if they hear hoops, immediately think unicorn. And I think that's what's going on. So, like, this guy knew. If that guy knew, that guy probably would have won the lottery or the Grand National. Or Do you know what I mean? Probably wouldn't have wasted his skills foreshadowing the sinking of a, a ship. So how were these these things appearing? How were these people getting these premonitions? Now, this is what's looked like. People said they're getting premonitions of what's going to happen. They weren't getting premonitions of going to ha what was going to happen. This was an inevitability. That is the sad story of the Titanic. It was an inevitability. Um, a lot of vessels were travelling a fairly treacherous route without, at the time, sonar and things like that to warn them of icebergs. And they were, they were travelling through ice banks. So... Ships having near misses and not serious, but collisions with icebergs was quite common. So there was an inevitability that one of these is going to hit, hit hard, and is going to go down. So when you're thinking about it, you think, right, what's the top speed of one of these boats? What impact? If you do your research as a right, what impact would really sink one? It's going to be right about 22 knots. Um, so that, I think, is what's going on here. Uh, not that, you know, these these are all premonitions. However, should had somebody have listened to the, these kind of books and been like, wow, this could be a serious problem, Titanic could have been avoided. Um, again, with the, the, oh, but they said there wasn't enough um, lifeboats for passengers. Titanic wasn't exclusive to this. Most vessels at the time were not carrying sufficient lifeboats for passengers. That was the reality. So that would have been the inevitability of any ship at that point sinking. Chances are... Most passengers wouldn't have got to see on a lifeboat. That, that's the way it is. So, no, these men weren't getting messages from the beyond trying to warn people of what was about to happen. They just did their research, and there was an inevitability about this. There are things in life that are an inevitability that we could say today. It doesn't make us psychic mediums. Uh, there will be another pandemic. At some point, there will be another pandemic, similar to what we've just had with COVID, because these things go in cycles. There was Spanish flu before COVID, you know? So to say in the next hundred years there will be a global pandemic. Yeah, there will be. There will be. That that's that's not I'm not that doesn't make me Nostradamus. And speaking of Nostradamus, he gets credited for a lot of these things. Uh he people always talk about Nostradamus's predictions. Nostradamus's predictions, if you've ever read them, are so bloody vague that um you're like, yeah, fair enough. A lot of things, and this is what isn't mentioned that Nostradamus predicted, never came true. Nostradamus predicted there were gonna be dragons in nineteen ninety six. I don't remember seeing them, do you? But no one ever mentions all the things that he got wrong. Now what's happening here for the kind of spooky side is you can see this with psychic mediums that, that are contacting the dead from the other side. They use a technique, it's an old vaudeville technique. This was this was a trick. They use a technique called shotgunning. And what shotgunning is, um, you make a statement vague enough that it, it spreads like a shotgun and it will hit the entire audience. So you can say something like, 
I'm getting a, a man, an elderly man. Well, of course you are. Of course you are, because let's face it, the bulk of people that die are, are elderly men. More men die than women. It's okay. I'm, I'm getting an elderly man. Aya. Yeah. And he's got a name. I think it's David. Oh, one of the most common names in the world. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Look at you. Shotgunning. Right. And then eventually one of your shots will hit. And so, so you just keep giving enough, enough vague and he's quite short. And someone will go, yes, I, I, old short man, David, yes, me. Then you've got him. Then you use what's called Barnum statements. And Barnum statements are statements that sound as if they are specifically about something, but they're not. They're so bloody vague that it means nothing. So they'll say something along the lines of, he seems a little, um, he seems a little bit annoyed. He seems, like, was he ever annoyed? And they're like, he did used to get annoyed. Who doesn't, Right. And then they'll say something along the lines of, and I'm I'm guessing this this was a this was a sad death. This was a sad death, and they got it was a sad death. And it sounds like they're talking to you. Of course, it was a bloody sad death, right? Very rarely do you ever get them and go, no, 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 we were psyched that he died. You don't get them because if they were, they wouldn't be at a psychic medium show trying to connect with a, a loved one. And the bulk of people in that crowd, that's what they're there for. They want to hear. Now, if you are a believer, I'm not. I'm not knocking you in any any ways at all. But what I'm saying is, let's look at this logically. The chances that people could communicate with the dead um, are slim, and the chances that every single person that appears on stage doing it can legitimately do it is a nonsense. At least one of them is going to be a fake, aren't they? So how do you know you're not visiting the fake? And that's that's kind of my point with this. So when it comes to, to these, these stories, these prediction stories, no, it was just an inevitability. It's, it's, we've got, we've got the shotgun in technique. We're, we're just, this is going to happen. Um, and then what's inside the books of Barnum's statements. They sound as if they are exactly about the Titanic, but they're not. However, there was a guy on board. This is where we get weird. And this is something I can't really explain. I just think this is a very creepy coincidence. There was a gentleman on board called W.T. Steed, and this is him. That's W.T. Steed now. The bulk of supernatural tales of the Titanic revolve around that man. Um, we are going to talk about him again in issue 31. Um, but to close out W.T. Steed's first touch of creepy, he wrote a book called The Sinking of a Modern Liner, which was about a vessel, same size as the Titanic, that leaves Liverpool, heading to New York, hits an iceberg at 22.5 knots, doesn't have enough passengers on board, and sinks. A lot of lives are lost. He also goes into detail that at one point the captain brandishes a revolver to stop the steerage passengers from rushing the lifeboats. Now, that's been largely debunked. Um, it was debunked in um, A Night to Remember, the book A Night to Remember. Uh, it was debunked that, that there's been this rumour for years that, that steerage passengers were held back, but they weren't. That, that's, that's massively debunked at this point. Um, but that features in his book. So a lot of that comes from his book itself. And he died on board the Titanic. Um, it gets so much weirder with W.T. Steed. Um, but he wrote a book. He, he foreshadowed his own death. Now, what I found remarkable about that is if you had done your research and you knew how unsafe those liners were, because ultimately that's what was going on, why would you get on one? But he did. Um, anyway, that's all for this one. Um, we will, uh, we will be catching up in the next one in issue 30, where we'll be adding more detail to the end of the catwalks. Um, and we will be watching... We'll be watching Titanic 666, which is a horror movie set aboard the Titanic. And wow. Um, anyway, in a world where you can be anything to just be nice. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.